Hello, I am David W. Parker, and this is episode four of the Programming Today I Learned WebGL series. Today we'll be looking about at shaders, and we'll be doing a lot of stuff with them today, so this may be a little bit longer of an episode. Uh, as you can see, we're going to cover all these different things in the API, and so let's go through it. Um, so this is just our Apple actual application. Uh, we'll start off um, just by declaring a couple of strings, one for the vertex shader and one for the fragment shader. Uh, each of these shaders is basically, it looks like a C program if you take away all of the extraneous uh, quotes and concatenation. And what we're doing here is we're taking a vector 4, which is a uh, RGBA, um, basically equivalent XYZ uh, A for the vertex points on the position and we're going to set a point size. So here we're going to set it to being centered and visible within the entire vertex shader source and then what we're going to do is set the point color in the fragment shader. Same thing with the VEC4 RGBA. So now we're going to be using red. Um, so VEC4s are covered for both uh, positions as well as colors and also visible here and so it's going to be red on this GL frag color. Uh, next up we'll do the same thing we did before by checking our WebGL presence and then we're going to use GLU tools to get the shader for the vertex shader code that we have set above and then as well as the fragment shader source that we set above and set those the vertex shader and fragment shader and then send those into the create program GLU tools here to get the program and then finally use the program. Um, then we're going to clear the background black for the buffer and draw any points that we have made um, with draw arrays using uh, points, GL points, uh, which will end up using the shader source here. So this is what your final output looks like. And so let's go ahead and look at GL utils now to see what some of these new uh, functions we've added are. So, like I said before, we have this get shader and then create program. So let's go ahead down to get shader first. Uh, it takes in the GL reference, the type, and the source. And we're going to use uh, create a shader of a given type. So uh, WebGL knows whether it needs to be a fragment shader or a vertex shader. Then what we're going to do is we're going to set the source on that, compile it, and then if there's not any errors, then we return it. Otherwise, if there is an error, we need to delete the shader and remove it from memory. Uh, we also have a couple other flags you could use on get shader, shader parameter here. You can check the delete, deletion status if we're currently deleting, as well as the shader type. So if we wanted to get back out, you know, fragment shader, vertex shader, we could get that using this same method here. Um, going on up here next, we had pass those into create a program. So if we go to the top here, we'll see once again taking the reference to the uh, GL object, as well as the vertex shader and fragment shader compiled sources that we have. So now we're going to create a program, and we'll attach the vertex shader to it. Uh, next, we'll attach the fragment shader to it, and then link the program. Uh, which basically links that program to the uh, WebGL reference here. And if the linking fails, we're going to go ahead and delete the program and both of the shaders to remove them from memory. And down here, if it's valid, uh, we're going to validate it. And if it's not valid, we're also going to delete them. And then we'll return the program. We have a couple console logs in here for some interesting uh, information if you want to check it out. You could see if something is a shader um, or is a program here. So if we go and we look at the console log here, you can see that uh, this is true and true here. Um, go ahead and hide that. Um, but if we went ahead and went is shader on the program and then we try to compile it, it's going to blow up because it's not. So that's useful, and you can throw that in a try catch if you wanted to actually use it within a program that doesn't actually just explode. 
in the source. Um, down here, we're going to get the attached shaders. So if you look here, you can see we have these two references to WebGL shaders. Uh, they're not going to output anything in the console, but what you can do with them is if you iterate through each of them, you can get their shader source by passing the shader uh, into the uh, GL get shader source function. So you can see right here we have those exact same sources. So you can do some cool on the fly manipulation with those if you're uh, wanting to. Um, that's basically it for this particular episode. Uh, of course, you know, vertex shaders, fragment shaders, there's a lot going into that. Um, hopefully I'll get to a point where I can ex have the time to explain those in more detail to you later. Um, but for now, you, you can just play around with this. Uh, ask me questions if you want. And um, happy coding. If you like it, what you see, please subscribe. Thanks.